Hello, everyone, and welcome to Introduction to R. In this lesson, we're going to learn about chi-squared tests, which are a type of statistical hypothesis test that deal with categorical variables. We'll start by looking at the chi-squared goodness of fit test. Now, when we looked at t-tests, we introduced the one-way t-test as a way to check whether some sample mean differs from an expected population mean. The chi-squared goodness of fit test is an analog to the one-way t-test, but for categorical variables. So it's going to be testing whether the distribution of a sample of categorical data matches an expected distribution. For example, we can use the chi-squared goodness of fit test to check whether the demographics of some members of a group match some larger group. For instance, if we wanted to check whether the breakdowns for race in a certain state conform to the breakdowns of the overall U.S. population. So when working with categorical data, the values or observations themselves aren't of much use for statistical testing because things like male, female, other, etc. have no mathematical meaning. So when we're dealing with categorical variables, we want to deal with the counts of those labels instead of the actual variable names themselves. So to show how to do a chi-squared goodness of fit test in R, we're going to start by generating some fake demographic data for the US and then a sample from a state, the state of Minnesota, that is going to be generated in a slightly different way. So the distribution of counts across the various categories are going to be different. And then we're going to use the chi-square test to see if we're able to detect that difference. So first, we're just going to start by generating the national demographics. So we're basically just repeating various categories a fixed number of times. So we're having some different racial categories repeated different numbers of times. And then we're going to have a Minnesota demographics data set, which is essentially we're going to call a sample that we're going to compare to the national data. And the distribution of the categories is going to be slightly different. And we'll just... Uh, generate the data and print the tables here so we can see what those differences might be. So after running these cells, we printed out a couple tables here that's just showing the breakdown of the different groups and the counts. If we wanted to add up some of these numbers, we would see that the distribution is slightly different, but the chi-squared test should be able to detect whether that's the case. So the chi-squared test is based on a so-called chi-squared statistic and you can calculate the chi-squared statistic with the following formula. You take the sum of the observed counts minus the expected count squared divided by the expected count. And in this formula, the observed count is the actual number for each category that we saw in our sample. And the expected count is based on the distribution of that same category within the population as a whole. So let's go ahead and calculate the chi-squared statistic for the data we generated to illustrate. So we're just going to start by making a table of our data. We're going to get the ratios of the overall population using prop.table. So that will get us the percentages for the various categories that we need to use to figure out what the chi-squared statistic is going to be. To get the expected counts then, we take those national ratios and we will multiply it by the amount of data in the sample. So that's just the length of the data sample. So basically all that's doing is going to give us some expected counts for each of the categories based on the category ratios in the population. And then to get the chi-squared statistic, we are just going to use this formula and plug those values in. So we're going to take the observed counts minus those expected counts that we calculated. We'll square that and divide by the expected counts. And then the whole thing is just summed up. That is what the formula told us to do. And then we're going to print it out. So let's run this whole cell and see what we get. So here the table is showing us the expected counts for each of the categories. And if we were to scroll up, we can see that those counts are 
a decent bit different than the ones we actually got, particularly for the white category here. We had 600 in our sample, but in the ex expectation that it was only 528. So 70 or so more than what was expected seems like kind of a lot. And then our chi-squared statistic here is 18.19. So similar to the t-test, where we compared our t-test statistic to a critical value based on the t distribution to determine whether a result was significant or not. When we're using the chi-squared test, we take the chi-squared test statistic, which we calculated here, and then compare it to a critical value based on the chi-squared distribution. In R, the nickname for the chi-squared distribution is chi sq so we can then work with the chi squared distribution within r just by using r p q and d before that nickname chi square and that will either generate random values from the distribution allow us to check proportions or probabilities beneath the curve check quantiles and check the uh, density at different points and that can allow us to make calculations on the curve. So let's use that knowledge and the output that we got above to calculate or find the critical value for a 95% confidence level for this chi-squared test and then calculate and check the p-value. So to find the critical value for a 95% confidence level, we want to find the quantile that cuts off 95% of the data. And for a chi-squared test, chi-squared distribution is a one-sided distribution, so we don't have to worry about anything below zero. So in this case, we want to get the quantile that cuts off 95% of the data, and we don't need to worry about a lower tail here. Um, with the with t-test, the we used 97.5 for this because we wanted an upper and lower tail. But here we can just use 0.95. The degrees of freedom argument is going to be the number of variable categories we're dealing with, minus one. Um, the demographic data we had here had five categories, so for that we're, we're going to use four. And then our p-value is going to be one minus the area under the probability curve up to the quantile for the chi-squared value that we found. So basically this p chi square with a quantile set equal to the chi square value we got that is going to find us the area under the chi squared curve up to this cutoff value so one minus that is going to be anything more extreme than the cutoff that we found which is the same thing as the p value so let's calculate these and print them out so we found that the critical value in this case for a 95 percent confidence is a chi-squared statistic of about 9.4. Well, we found something that's almost twice that, so we definitely found something that's statistically significant at the 95% level here. And we can see that in the p-value, because we got a p-value of 0.001 something. And with a 95% confidence level, we're only looking for a p-value that's less than 5%. So this is way, way less than 5%. So in this case, there's very likely something interesting going on here, and there really is a difference between the sample data we have and the population. Now, of course, since we're using a programming language like R, we don't need to be manually calculating the chi-squared statistic and the p-value. I just wanted to kind of show how you could do it to gain a better conceptual understanding of what was going on. But if you actually want to do a chi-squared test with R, it's easier just to use the built-in chi-squared test function. So we'll show how you do that. It's called chi-square, chi-sq.test. And then all you have to do is pass in the observed values for the first x argument. And for the second argument, you just have to pass in the expected proportions. We calculated and saved that earlier in a variable called national ratios. So all we have to do is pass those things in and run it. And we will get results that were the, pretty much the same as what we calculated earlier. So we see we have a chi-squared statistic of 18 something, four degrees of freedom, and the p-value is pretty much the same as the one we calculated earlier. So the chi-squared goodness of fit test allows you to check whether a categorical variable in a sample differs from the same one 
in a population. And there's another type of chi-squared test you can do called the chi-squared test of independence. So independence is a key concept in probability that describes a situation where knowing the value of one variable tells you nothing about the value of another variable. For instance, the month you were born in probably doesn't tell you anything about which web browser you use, so we'd expect birth month and browser preference to be independent. On the other hand, your birth month might say something about whether you excelled at sports in school, at least in the U.S., because kids that are born earlier in the year tend to have a leg up when it comes to sports because they, in younger grade school, can be as much as 10% or more older than kids that were born later in the year. The chi-squared test of independence allows you to check whether two categorical variables are independent of one another. The test of independence is commonly used to determine whether variables like education, political views, or other preferences vary based on demographic factors like gender, race, or religion. So let's generate some fake voter polling data and then perform a test of independence on them. So we're going to start by generating some race data similar to what we did in the first example. We will create a table as well and look at it. Then we're going to create another data set that's some party data. So Democrat, Republican, and Independent will be in that data set. So now we have two different tables for the same voters, but one is telling us what their demographics are and the other is telling us what their parties are. And it's important to note here that when we're generating this data, we're just sampling from this distribution at some given probabilities. But we didn't use this demographic data to inform the way we're sampling from the voter party data in any way. So we know based on the way we're sampling this data that these two samples are actually independent. So when we run our chi-square test of independence on this data, we would hope it would show us that they are independent and wouldn't give us a false flag that they aren't independent because we know they're independent based on the way we generated the data. So let's scroll down. This, this is the results of the data generation. Now, if you're interested in how you would go about manually calculating the chi-squares statistic and p-value like we did in the first part of the lesson, I do actually have code to do that here. And you can check out the written version of the guide to look through this if you want to. I'll leave the link to this in the description below. But we're going to scroll straight down into how to do this using R. And you can do it the same way that we did with the chi-squared test of independence. We just have to use the chi-squared.test function. We use the first table as the first x argument. But now instead of a p argument, we're just going to pass in a second data set as a y argument with the second variable. So we're going to pass in that second voter party data for the second part, and when we run this, we'll get a result similar to the other one, but now we're doing a test of independence instead of the goodness of fit test. So when we run this here, we can see it says a Pearson's chi-squared test, and we have a chi-squared statistic again, 9.1, eight degrees of freedom, and the p-value is 0.32. So that p-value is pretty high. If we were using a 95% confidence level again for this hypothesis test, this p-value isn't nearly good enough to reject the null hypothesis. So in this case, we would accept the null hypothesis that the two data sets are independent because this isn't a strong enough result for us to say there's something interesting going on and that they are actually dependent on one another. So to wrap up this lesson, chi-squared tests provide a way to investigate whether the distribution of a categorical variable in a sample is the same as the distribution present in some related sample or population. It also provides a means of testing independence between two categorical variables. Now in the next lesson, we're going to wrap up our look into statistical hypothesis testing by learning about a third type of statistical inference test called the analysis of variance or ANOVA.
which lets us test whether the mean of a numeric variable differs based on the levels of a categorical variable. It's kind of like a way to run several t-tests in a sample against a population for each level of a categorical variable. So maybe the overall mean of a sample doesn't differ from the overall mean of a population, but perhaps if you break down the sample by some categorical variable, such as the voter party, well maybe the averages of the, within each of those different parties might differ from the population mean. So that's what we'll look into next time with the analysis of variance. So thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.